Now you might remember, a few weeks ago, I created my very own token, Large. My very first token. And it was a pretty easy process. I managed to do it in less than 60 seconds. But if you remember when I made the video, there was actually nothing I could do with the token once I created it. I couldn't see it on the HRC20 Explorer, and there was no way to interact with it. But now there is. Today, we're gonna to talk about the Contractor. So the Contractor is basically a way to interact with smart contracts on Harmony without any prior technical knowledge. And it comes from the same brain that brought us the token creator in the first place, which is Michael Otis, and it is bundled in the suite ripped.io. And the great thing about the Contractor was it's the first recipient of a grant from Harmony. So there's vindication that this is a tool that we need. There's vindication that there's a tool that will actually be built and that has some money behind it to develop and move forward. So that's pretty cool. So I found myself thinking about what a token actually is. And there's a definition I found which is pretty spot on, which is the token is not money in any shape or form. It's much more profound than that. A token is a representation of something in the blockchain. And this it can be money, it can be time, it can be services, it can be shares in the company, it could be a virtual pet, it could be anything. But the point is, by allowing things to be tokens, we can allow them to be programmable, we can allow them to interact with smart contracts, we can exchange them, destroy them, create them, or assign them to other people. It's that functionality that sets them apart from money. That's cool. But in order to be able to do that, you need a tool. And the contractor is that tool. I have a token large. Let's see how I can interact with my token and do anything that I want with it. So let's get into it. And the first thing we're gonna do is open the ripped.io suite. And if we go there and look under token tools, which is where we found the token creator in the first place, create token is there. The contractor is grayed out. But I have a secret because I spoke to Michael about this. And he said, well, yeah, you can deploy the contractor on the testnet, and it is live on mainnet, but you can't access it through the website. So he gave me the address. So I'm going to go into the real contractor, not the testnet contractor. And the first thing we're confronted with is a pretty simple user interface in which we have to in input our contract address or our contract address, contract, contract, I think contractions, no, let's not go there. So the contract address is this, and that is all information that we were supplied with when I made the initial token, which, if you remember, was done in less than 60 seconds, which is kind of insane. So the ABI is the way in which I will interact with my token. You can paste that in there, and then just click read contract. And it appears like nothing has happened, but a lot has happened. Because now I'm now, I'm now able to interact with the information of my token, the programmability of my token, and unlock all the functionality of that token. So what I'm gonna do is click on Save Contract, and that basically will mean that next time I come in here, I don't have to input all the information that I just inputted. So I should save my contract as supermassive. You successfully added supermassive to your list. So if I now look in my list of saved contracts, there's supermassive. So next time I come into the contractor, I can just click on that and I'm there. So what can I now do once I have access to my contract? Well, if we go on this little drop down here, interact with your contract. There's a ton of different options, like a really a ton. Some of them are non-payable, some of them are view. But let's look at, for instance, total supply. What is the total supply of my token? Well, I think, if I remember correctly, I made 51 million of these tokens. And if you check back the old video, you'll be able to see that, but let's check, total supply. And it tells me 51 million. You have to click the convert result into integer to get the correct run, but that's 51 million. That is correct. What else can I do? Uh, well, I could increase the allowance. I could renounce ownership of my own token so I can transfer the ownership to someone else. I could uh, bestow permissions on somebody else. And this is all basically done through addresses. So I say this address is an admin and can do 
certain um, you know functions within my token ecosystem. Um, so here you have has role, name, owner. So what about the symbol? Well, if I call up symbol, it says the value is large. So my token is large. All of this is being read from the smart contract. What else can I do? Well, let's say I wanted to send tokens to somebody. And that's a pretty simple thing to do. So we go transfer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer, let's say, 100 tokens to this address. And that's my address. Just check that I'm logged in. Yes, I am. All good. Click Execute. It'll ask me to sign the transaction. All good. And then it's done. That's it. So now, if I were to take that same address and now look at, for instance, balance of, and we put input this address. So now it's telling me that I successfully wrote my contract. So that transaction should be done. And it's giving me a transaction hash as well. I'm just gonna open that in a new tab and check that it actually happened. That's the beauty of blockchain. You can always see what actually happened for reals. For realsies, y'all. So yeah, the transaction is real. It actually happened. Okay, wonderful. So when we actually recorded this video, the HRC20 Explorer wasn't ready yet. And now I've gone on holiday, so I'm recording this from my holiday on my iPhone. So if it sounds a bit strange, sorry about that. But basically this, uh, you can view the transaction in the Hunt Explorer through the recently added HRC20 Transactions tab. And if you can't find your transaction, you can now use the calendar to search for a specific date. Last but not least, HRC20 tokens are also available now in the new Harmony Wallet Chrome extension. You can store your HRC20 tokens such as Seed and BUSD as well as Transfer and Stake, native Harmony One tokens, and now back to the contractor. So now if we go to the balance of function, and input the address that I sent those tokens to, click Execute. And it tells me now the value is 100. So yeah, I sent 100 large tokens to that account. Done. Now I know this sounds super simple, but this is the basic functionality that you require for a token sale, for instance. You need to be able to distribute tokens to the people who have bought tokens as a part of your token sale. Now there's a gazillion other ways that you might be wanting to distribute tokens, but this is the essential functionality of it. I have not input any code here. I am simply interacting with the contractor, which is interacting with the smart contract on my behalf in a very, very simple way. Now, obviously, you need to know what these functions are, but if I look down the list, it's not particularly difficult to understand what they are. Now, all of this is based on ERC20 functionality as well. So if you needed to, and you weren't sure what it meant, what a burn was, for instance, then you could simply Google that in terms of ERC20. It does feel like we need more documentation, more information about how to do these specific functions. But basically, that's it. Now, the other thing you can do with the contractor is look at well-known contracts such as BUSD. So I can now look at the BUSD contract on Harmony, read the contract, and we're gonna save it, read the contract. And now it tells me I can click to interact with my functions. Now, the functions that are built into the BUSD contract are quite a lot different from the ones that are in the contract of the token that I created. There is a reason for that. So for instance, there's for asset protection role. And if I look at asset protection role, you might be wondering, well, what is this? You can do some forensics on this. So what I did was I looked at the Paxos Global GitHub repository for BUSD and went down and, and tried to figure out what this was actually all about. And I found it. And it says, as required by our regulators, we have introduced a role for asset protection to freeze or seize the assets of a criminal party when required to do so by law, including by court order or other legal process. The asset protection role can freeze and unfreeze the BUSD balance of any address on chain. It can also wipe the balance of an address after it is frozen to, the, to allow the appropriate authorities to seize the backing assets. 
Freezing is something that Paxos will not do on its own accord, and as such, we expect to happen extremely rarely. So, this is a regulatory requirement for BUSD to be regulated by the authorities in New York. It had to be in there. You won't find that in my token, but it's a piece of code that can be added to my token should I wish to be regulated in the same way that BUSD is regulated. It's just code at the end of the day. But it's really interesting to do some forensics on the BUSD contract to see what is being done to ensure there's no shenanigans going on when that contract is invoked and when it's used for basically for finance for handling large transactions of money which is really fun and all I did was just use the contractor so I would highly recommend just getting involved having a look and just digging through and, and educating yourself on what different pieces of functionality within smart contracts can do and it's also worth bearing in mind that we're super early in this process smart contracts are very very new and there is so much more functionality so much more mature functionality that's going to be built in but for a newbie like me to be able to do these simple things with my own smart contract my own token without requiring me to understand any code in this simple interface is great and i can understand why this was the first recipient of a grant on harmony michael otis i salute you